Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we are going to do an unboxing of For What Remains. Uh, this is the Streets of Ruin uh, module, I guess you could say. There's three different games in this series, uh, along with some uh, optional accessories like a dice pack in the faction colors and a terrain and template pack, which we'll take a look at in this video as well. So, but first we'll get into this. This is from DVG Games. It is created by the uh, designer who never sleeps, David Thompson. This is more of a uh, tactical um, RPG-ish kind of uh, squad-based game, or not squad-based, unit-based game uh, set in a dystopian future. Uh, and they call it Streets of Ruin, of course, because Streets of Fire was already taken. Hey! If you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so it's glossy box, and this is a peek of the artwork style. So let's dig in, shall we? First thing you get is a cardboard spacer. Looks like it's holding some stuff in it here, though. It's an interesting technique. And like I said, it's uh, just an empty piece of cardboard here. But inside were dice and a card pack. So you get four ten-sided die. Uh, no, five ten-sided die. I cannot count. But they are ten-sided, so I got that part right. But the number, you get five. Then we've got this set of cards. It looks like they are... Uh, character cards with the different actions. This may be for the AI. This is solo uh, playable out of the box. You could true solo it playing both sides if you want, or you can play against an AI controlling one of the factions. So uh, here we've got a commander card. Uh, and I believe these are the AI instructions, um, possibly. Hellfire, Inferno, Vanguard. Sounds like robots. And there's a Commander stat card. Oh, and here's the Harpy. And you can see the artwork. It's pretty nice artwork, actually. It's not over overdone. There's a Hellfire. It's a mech looking unit. The Inferno is also a mech. And the Vanguard. So you got the character cards, stat cards, as well as the AI control cards. And that is for, they don't identify the faction actually on the card. I assume we'll figure that out based on, because this, this is black against red. So, so Grenadier, Medic, Rebel Leader, Scout, Sniper. And there's our Grenadier, our Medic, our Rebel Leader. Scout, Sniper. These are nice, they're pre-rounded, they're large size. They seem bigger though than the uh, the uh, tarot size. We need a new name for that because tarot's bad and, you know, don't want to have that in there, but uh, we need a name for those large size cards. But these seem actually bigger. These seem a little wider than that, that size card. So, um, they are glossy kind of thin but I think they'll serve their purpose because they're you know they're not shuffling them so you get the two faction cards there we have a little draw bag very tiny draw bag and then we've got the rule book the streets of ruin rule book and it is glossy large print a very large print there. Uh, it's about 30, 40 pages. Let's see, 36 pages or so. Final thoughts from uh, David Thompson. He took the time to write all that. And so it's full color. Like I said, it is glossy, so you're picking up a player here from my lights. But lots of pictures and details and backstory. Here's a whole fictional section here. So the medic is the Freeman Coalition, so uh, that would be the red color. And then the combine is the 
black colors. This is the Freeman versus the Combine. Uh, the other factions in the game, and these are these will come out in the other two volumes, are the Echo, Soldiers of Light, Earthen, and the Order of the New Dawn. And so if you get the other two games in the series, you'll get those factions as well, and you can combine them. So, detail on the characters, and the rules with full color. Examples. I do like the artwork, though. Like I said, it's very understated. Uh, and there's the rules for solitaire play. So 24 pages, roughly, for the rules, and then how to adapt it for the solitaire. Is another three. Let's see, three pages. Yeah, three pages. And then uh, a little backstory. So that's the rule book. And now we've got a faction guide here for the Freeman. And their backstories and details about each of the characters and their specific weapons. So here's like the Grenadier's rocket launcher example. So this is what the, uh, the player would have to give them clues about how you play their faction. So we got one for the Freeman, one for the Combine. And these are about eight pages each. They're not very, they're not numbered, but it's about eight pages. So those details and then we've got the semi palatinsk legacy streets of ruin so this is probably the campaign book yep this book introduces the legacy and contains the streets of ruin campaign uh, when playing solitaire you can take the role of either side it says so you can play a campaign in solo mode so it gives you kind of a, a map you know, so you can get into character you know, where each of the missions are taking place. And I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but it's got scenario one, tells you how to set it up, the solitaire adjustments as necessary, the victory conditions, how to set up the map. So I don't want to spoil anything if you want to go campaign, you know, scenario one, two, three in order. So, all right. So now we have some templates. These are cardstock templates. They're pre-cut, but they allow you to see, so your character is here. This is the range of the flamethrower, the area of effect for a flamethrower, which you would then overlay. So again, same thin, glossy cardstock. And then for the rocket launcher, you lay it on your target space, and I assume you roll to see where you actually hit. That's going to be my guess without looking at it, but there's that. So you get those two, and then we've got our map tiles. Now again, these are very, th now these are going to maybe a little more troubling in that they're very thin because they can, you know, start curling and joining them, so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, we'll have to see in practice. Now you could always set this up and if you wanted to put plexiglass on top of it, not the greatest solution usually for, uh, you know, rather than, you know, more harder mounted maps, but, uh, but it is what it is and is what you got. So they are double sided. Um, one thing I am noticing here is that they are not numbered and that's always a nuisance in some of these kind of games. Cause when you're setting up the map, now you've got to really like look at the detail and, and go through and find the right piece instead of it just being, this is one A, one B, two A, two B, so on and so forth. So a uh, little bit of an oversight there on the design. Again, haven't set it up, but you get you, a lot of these. There are, there are several here. So there's one, two, the artwork is great. I really do like the artwork on it. They're also rounded. These, which is kind of unusual because when you're gonna put them together, it doesn't really matter. But you also have the, uh, these, uh, uh, hexes, the squares, are delineated by these plus signs, right? So when you put them together, you can see the plus signs don't really match up. You may have to overlap them a little bit. Um, or just, you know, ignore that those are there, but you do end up with, um, 
uh, the rounded corners leave openings, you know, but it's not, again, not that big a deal. So anyway, one, there's two. No, that was three, sorry. Four. I do like, it's kind of like a miniatures game without miniatures, which is actually very awesome because I'm getting, oh, I'll cover that later. Um, I, I like the idea of doing top down. I mean, for those those of us who play war games, we're used to topography and stuff being represented in 2D and it works out just fine. So rather than having a bunch of 3D terrain, uh, taking up space, uh, having these just flat uh, 2D representations of your area is usually sufficient enough for most games. So that's awesome. And I like that it's counters instead of, they, didn't, they could have made this, gone overboard, made this a miniatures, a miniatures game. And I'm glad they didn't because it's more cost effective and now you can get more of the game. And you can be more creative with the artwork because you don't have to be three dimensional. Ugh, toxic waste. So obviously the yellow line is going to mean, you know, you can see across it and the orange line, I mean, who knows, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, just from looking at it here, you can't climb it or it's more difficult to climb. Uh, maybe the oranges, you can't go across it at all. So here we have a tank. I flip that one. Let's check. So there's some barrels. Turned over car. There's a tank. Some cars again. Some uh, tank traps, some old tires, armored personnel carrier, it looks like, of some sort, and some more debris and some toxic waste spillage. Some more tank traps. So, I did not count those. You get a lot of these. So, go through it real quick. One, and two, and three, and four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's twelve map boards. They look square, so they're the, the they are square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven by seven. Those are probably a little over an inch. All right, and then we've got counter sheets. Another spacer, and then four sheets of counters. And take a look at those sheets here. So we've got the combine and their uh, units here. So you see here we've got six commanders. Um, three have this face icon on here, and three have this irradiated icon, and then E, R, V. And it seems like they all have that same. So there's six counters per. Um, actually, it's looking like a, a, a gas mask icon. Then we got some round ones for the counters as well. So there's some commander counters here. And the harpy. And the hellfire is a larger counter. So it takes up more space. But I really do like this. This is similar to uh, some other games I've adapted and upgraded from miniatures to counters and use the, the larger ones for the larger items, the larger units and the smaller ones. So that works out really good. So now we have a mix on counter sheet two. The vanguards are smaller, the grenadier. And you got larger ones too. And now we so we've got the uh, we have the combine and the free free men, and here we've got them again, and the inferno bot, and the last sheet more of the free men, and then some blank counters, which again it says blank, but now it's not blank because it says blank, which makes it not blank, and there's the inferno. And they punch straight out. DVG's gotten really good at doing counters these days. These are similar to the sheets you get for the uh, other David Thompson games, the Soldiers and Postmen uniforms and Pavlov's house, things like that, where they're really well designed, well cut. 
and they punch out quite cleanly. So very cool. And now we've got some reference cards down here in the bottom. We've got the Freeman Coalition AI activation reference card, single-sided. The Freeman Abilities reference, single-sided. And again, this would have probably made more sense had this been double-sided, like this. So you got one sheet for the Freeman to use, and they can just flip it over. But they're single-sided. Maybe single-sided printing was cheaper. Combine AI ref uh, reference and the abilities reference. Again, both single-sided. You can combine them if you want. Maybe put them in a binder or something, or in a, a sleeve. And then we got our force rosters for the combine and for the free men. Again, single-sided. But in this case, maybe they make sense to be that way. So uh, these you're probably, it looks like you fill in some information, which means these you're probably going to want to photocopy, or I'm sure they have them available for download on their website. So you can uh, not um, mess these up. The other thing, obviously, is you can laminate these and then use a dry erase marker or a grease pencil or something like that to mark them up. So, so the dice pack, there's, there, were eight, there were six factions. So you're getting uh, four dice for each faction. And it looks like the um, 10 or 0 on each dice is the faction logo. They do come in a resealable bag. So that way each player can have dice of their own instead of the five generic dice that come with a set. And this is an additional, this does not come with the game, obviously. This is an optional expansion you can get. But if you're going all into the series, then... You can do that. So yeah, we've got the uh, faction symbol there on the 10. And so you get four of each faction. So six factions, you get 24 dice. And then finally, uh, I guess if you want to set up tactical battles yourself, these are the For What Remains Terrain and Template Pack expansion. So uh, this would cover all the games. All, the th all three games, three games so far. And this is just an additional set of tiles. And then, like I said, the, the transparent templates that you can use to lay over instead of the, the ones from uh, the game. And so they do appear to be tinted as well, which is kind of nice. So here's the flamethrower template. So we had the flamethrower template from before. And so this is the plastic version. So now you can just lay this on top of the terrain tile and see everywhere that the flamethrower can hit. It's a little hard to see on this one. Let's try it down here if you're firing in the, in the grass. So that's pretty cool. So you got the flamethrower to go with the flamethrower, and you got the rocket launcher here. And again, it's kind of a tinted color. I don't know if you can see that orange kind of glow there. So that one goes for that, and then there are apparently some here that are going to be that, that may not be available in this Streets of Ruin, but are in the other expansions. But you'll get a uh, let's see, a caution, a Cadian Blast template, which is kind of a plus sign, and then a Fire Blast. And apparently, you can shoot this two ways. There's a character slot here. So you can fire blast this way, or you can fire blast this way. So you get those in there, and then you get looks like nine more um, mountain tiles. Ooh, big crater. Big lake. And a covered supply dump. More toxins. And then the building. 
in another building. Or a, a pipe. Or a Quonset hut. So, all right. So those are in the expansion pack for the terrain tiles and the template pack. So we'll just throw those in here and pretend that they're there. So anyway, if you pick up a copy of For What Remains, The Streets of Ruin, ignoring these, because those are the expansion and the dice, you're going to get uh, six... Six player aid cards. You're going to get four sheets of character counters and a few markers. You're going to get 12 in the game map tiles. Geomorphic map tiles. You're going to get the campaign book. The combine reference. The free men reference. The streets of ruin rule book. The counter bag. The character cards and the AI deck, or AI reference cards. Four generic dice, or five, excuse me, five generic dice. And a cardboard insert, which we don't need to keep. And that is everything that comes in for what remains Streets of Ruin, designed by David Thompson and published by DVG Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!